Can you believe it's already November? Can you believe it's already week nine of the NFL season? Last Sunday on the Power Five, we went four and one. How about a five and zero oh sweep this week? Good news. If you like cashing early, this is going to be the show for you. I have two first half bets and even a first quarter bet. Plus a teaser and a total for you as well. As a reminder, you can always comment down below with your thoughts on these selections. Just also make sure to smash that like button. Always appreciate your support here on the Power 5. Here we go. Number one, Patriots, Titans under 38. Do not be fooled by those 52 points the Titans allowed against Detroit last week thanks to turnovers. The Lions had five touchdown drives that were 26 yards or shorter, not to mention a punt return for another touchdown. The Titans defense only allowed 225 total yards for the game. Statistically, they have been one of the better defenses in the entire league this season. In fact, they are number one in the league in total defense, 265.4 yards per game allowed. This week, they're up against the Patriots, likely with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback. Drake May still in concussion protocol. Brissett does not turn the ball over. Okay, but he only had 132 yards passing on 24 attempts last week against the Jets. Meanwhile, the Titans offense, it remains terrible, whether it's Will Levis or Mason Rudolph starting a quarterback. Cannot lay the points with Tennessee here, given that no team has covered a spread this season the week after facing the Lions. But the bottom line is this. Both these offenses rank in the bottom six in EPA per play. Under it is for me. Number two, here's a 3% client play for you. It is a teaser. All Ohio with the Browns and Bengals. Let's tease the Browns up to plus seven and a half and the Bengals down to minus one. As I anticipated when backing the Browns, plus nine last week, their offense looked a lot better with Jameis Winston under center. Winston certainly got away with some bad throws in the outright upset against the Ravens. But nevertheless, at home, I expect the Browns this week to be competitive against the Chargers team, not really built to win by margin. LA is just two games all season where they've scored more than 23 points. Browns head coach Kevin Stefanski, pretty good at home. 25 and 13 straight up all time. Then, for the other teaser leg, I'm just going to draw a line in the sand and say no way the Bengals drop to 0-5 straight up at home. They're facing a Raiders team that's poorly coached, bereft of talent at the skill positions, and could be starting their fifth different offensive line combination. Honestly, Las Vegas was lucky to cover each of the past two weeks. They're not going into Cincinnati and winning. Joe Burrow's going to have a big game. So that's Browns and Bengals in a two-team six-point teaser. That is a 3% client play. Number three, Ravens first half minus six versus the Broncos. Get right spot for Baltimore after suffering that aforementioned outright loss in Cleveland last week. Lamar Jackson is going to play. Uh, There was really no doubt that he would. But it was officially announced yesterday. Still, I don't want to lay more than one score for the full game here with the Ravens, who often struggle to close out victories. But Denver's somewhat fraudulent at 5-3 and straight up. Four of the Broncos' wins have come against the Jets, Saints, Raiders, and Panthers. Quarterback Bo Nix, he has typically struggled early in games. And check this out. You know who doesn't struggle early in games? Lamar Jackson. 54-29-2 ATS in the first half in his career. Most profitable quarterback to bet on in the first half during that time. Ravens will go into the halftime break with a nice lead at home there. Number four, Eagles minus two and a half in the first quarter versus the Jaguars. Yes, a first quarter bet. uh, There's a first for everything here on the Power Five. And I think this is the first time I've ever given out a first quarter bet. Have you heard this insane stat? The Eagles have not scored a single point in the first quarter all season. So, of course, I'm going to bet them in the first quarter here. And I think uh, their scoreless run in first quarters ends Sunday, obviously, against a bad Jaguars team. What makes this first quarter stat even wilder for Philly is they're 5-2 and straight up. So, it's not like they're a bad football team. They're obviously a good football team. It's just these slow starts. I just think the Jags are the perfect opponent for the Eagles uh, to get on track against early, okay, get the get things going, get their first good start of the season. Jacksonville allows an average of 28 points at 382.1 yards per game. Dead last in DVOA on that side of the ball, defensively. Certainly, the Eagles are not going to have a season without scoring a first quarter point. I think we can all agree on that. I think this is easily going to be their fe- best first quarter of the year. And on defense, the Eagles get a break because the Jaguars offense Probably going to be without their top two receivers. They also traded left tackle Cam Robinson. Big start for Dan Alexander's Eagles. 
this week. Pardon me, I got all choked up about it. Now, that Jaguars-Eagles game was originally scheduled for Sunday night, but was flexed out of that position in favor of Colts-Vikings. And that's going to be our final play for Sunday's Power 5 here in the Colts-Vikings matchup. The market seems to like the Colts, but I like the Vikings minus 3 in the first half. Shop around for those minus 3s. They are out there. I just think this is a buy-low, get-right spot for Kevin O'Connell's Vikings, who have dropped back-to-back -back games following a 5-0 start. Joe Flacco starting a quarterback for Indy. Been a lot of debate over that decision. Uh, does Anthony Richardson just need more reps and kind of learn on the job? Here's why I don't like Flacco starting in this matchup. He's not very mobile, and that's going to be a problem against the Brian Flores coach defense. Nobody blitzes more on defense than the Vikings. Minnesota, by the way, offensively third in the league in first half scoring. Indianapolis is 28th. I don't think Flacco's enough to make up that kind of gap. Let us now go ahead and recap a wild Power 5 full of first half and first quarter bets. Uh, but number one was Patriots-Titans under 38. Number two... Teaser, Browns and Bengals. Make sure you can get 7.5 with the Browns. At least 7.5 with the Browns on that. Bengals down to minus 1. Number 3, Ravens first half minus 6 versus the Broncos. Number 4, Eagles minus 2.5 in the first quarter versus Jacksonville. Number 5, Vikings minus 3 in the first half against the Colts. Again, go ahead, comment down below. Let me know what you think of those selections. Any questions you may have about the Sunday NFL slate. Feel free to drop those as well. Any general thoughts? Let me know what you're betting on Sunday. Like to read that. And after you've smashed that like button, I know you already have, but just a reminder in case you forgot, head on over to wt.buzz slash bp. That's where you find my top two sides for Sunday. I'm coming off a nice 4% best bet winner Thursday with the Jets. I am now 63% this season with NFL sides, so you will not want to miss these two that I've got on tap for you Sunday. Don't forget, I'm also number one in college football this season at Wager Talk. 42, 21, and 21, my last 63 CFB bets. That's plus 66.9 units. Also up an additional 39.6 units of profit in soccer since April. I finished plus 45.3 units in the NBA last season. And on that note, that does it for Sunday's edition of the Power 5. Make sure you are subscribed to the Wager Talk a YouTube channel. And until next time, guys, let's cash some tickets.